Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily. We have a lot of news to report on with sales in the U.S. market last month. And later on in the show, we've got another design handbook. But first, some product news. The Smart brand will reveal a new four-seat concept in Frankfurt. Meet the Forjoy, which shows the company's new design philosophy, even though it still has that classic smart silhouette. It's powered by a 55-kilowatt electric motor and has quite the wildly styled interior with its oddly shaped seats. Clearly, with no doors, roof, or rear window, this show car is not ready for the streets. But the company says the production four-seater will be ready in late 2014. And don't forget, we'll be webcasting from the Frankfurt Show next Tuesday, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Earlier in the year, Volkswagen announced that its futuristic-looking diesel plug-in hybrid, the XL1, will be the most fuel-efficient production vehicle ever made. Its 800cc two-cylinder engine and 27-horsepower electric motor help it deliver a combined fuel economy rating on the European test cycle of 261 miles per gallon. But it will also carry a price tag that's just as eye-popping as the fuel economy number. A report from German publication Wirtschaftswoche says the car is going to cost 111,000 euros. That's about $145,000. VW will only build 250 XL1s, which are expected to be available next year. Okay, now let's take a look at the sales figures for August in the U.S. market because the news just keeps getting better. Wards reports that total sales came to nearly 1.5 million units, up nearly 13% compared to a year ago on a daily selling rate basis. The SAR topped 16 million vehicles, and that's the kind of bull market we have not seen since the Great Recession. Once again, Subaru was the biggest gainer of any automaker, up a staggering 40%. Jaguar Land Rover also put in big gains, up 35%, followed by BMW, which of course includes Mini. Honda was the fourth biggest gainer, with Mazda right behind it. The worst performer was Volvo, down nearly 16%, and the only automaker to actually see its sales go down. As we've said before, Volvo desperately needs new models. Kia was the next weakest performer, with sales up only 0.3%. VW was up 3.5%, Hyundai was up 4.3%, and Porsche was up 6%. But even though some of these companies posted sales increases, they lost market share because the overall market grew faster. Some of the other standout performers include Lexus, which outsold every other luxury brand for the first time in quite a while. But Cadillac, which saw its sales shoot up nearly 33%, sold more than 20,000 new cars for the month, signaling it could become a serious contender in the luxury segment, probably in the next year or two. Buick sales also shot up 32%. The Grand Cherokee sold nearly 18,000 units, a staggeringly good number for Jeep. The Honda CRV sold over 34,000, a jaw-dropping 44% increase. And the Toyota Camry, at 44,000 units, actually outsold the Chevy Silverado pickup. And because a lot of you like to keep tabs on the electric car segment, the Chevy Volt came out best with over 3,300 cars sold, topping the Nissan Leaf at 2,400. But Tesla was hot on their heels with 2,100 cars sold. But only 30 people showed up to buy the Mitsubishi High. Styling. Design, they're the same thing, right? Wrong. The master of automotive knowledge, Jim Hall, will explain why in the latest edition of Design Handbook, coming up right after this. Here's another great thing about the all-around performance of our Dueler tires. A comfortable, quiet ride. Oh. At Bridgestone, our passion for performance knows no bounds. In this week's edition of Design Handbook, Jim Hall takes a step back and 
as we turn to the fundamental section with a topic he calls styling versus design. This segment is called, well, Design Handbook. And the title is pretty much self-explanatory. But in the complex world of automotive design, there's another wonderful term that seems to be used less and less these days, styling. Once used to describe the design operations at most of the world's automakers, the term fell out of fashion in the early to mid 80s. Styling was seen as puffery, something so lightweight it was inconsequential. At the Detroit 3, styling was completely purged from the names of their design operations. This was, and still is, wrong. Styling is no less important than design, and unfortunately, these are not interchangeable concepts. Let me show you. Here's a well-designed glass. It's attractive, it's practical. It'd look good holding almost any brand of a good single malt scotch. It's an excellent example of really good design. But this glass, this glass is styled. Both hold a comparable amount of the aforementioned adult beverage, and both are easily used, but one of them, this one stands out. Not only was it styled, but it has style. Here's one really well-designed set of cutlery. It's functional, comfortable in the hand, and it's a great baseline for what a really competent fork, knife, and spoon should be. But these three pieces transcend competency. They have presence, they command your eye. This is heavily styled cutlery, and it's no less functional than the competently designed set. Houses, as we all know, are regularly designed. But they can be styled. And so it is with cars. Without citing an extreme case, let's take a look at the 2013 Honda Accord. We're talking about a clean, functional, and very nicely surfaced four-door sedan. It's one of the best looking Accords in years. The function of the car reads through its design. It's a very, very well-designed family car. Chevrolet's new Impala is more than designed. It has been styled. Now to some eyes, mine included, it's a bit overdone. But regardless, from almost any angle, the new Impala has a presence and attitude that's been missing from its predecessors for several decades. There are a lot of other cars that are chock-a-block with style. Some of them good, some of them bad. But whether it's the Chrysler 300 or the upcoming Infiniti Q50, to my eyes, styling always pips design. For Autoline Styling, excuse me, Design Handbook, I'm Jim Hall. As always, if you've got topics for Jim to cover on Design Handbook, be sure to drop us a line at viewermail at autoline.tv. And if you have missed previous editions of Handbook, you can always search for it on YouTube, where we upload all our features as standalone videos. And don't forget to join us for AutoLine After Hours tonight. Our guest will be Bob Carter, who's the head of automotive operations for Toyota Motor Sales USA. What does Toyota have up its sleeve? You're going to have to tune in tonight to find out. That's 6 p.m. Eastern Time on AutoLine.tv. And that wraps up today's report, and we invite you to join us again here tomorrow.